building today and repair. Um, our buddy Jed over here in Moab, that's what he does for a living. He's a welder. He uh, welds and he welds a lot of stuff. But another thing that he does is he also owns a river raft company here called Worldwide River Expeditions. And here's the front of his shop right here. But uh, yeah, pretty awesome situation. But today what we're doing is we're visiting with uh, River Rat Welding and Repair because he's got a special situation going on in here and he wants to make sure everybody that owns this situation knows all about it. customer uh, didn't winterize it last year and let it freeze and he uh, finally got it to me I was able to well, what happened to it so what happened was is these are cooled by uh, lake water or river water wherever you're running well, it now how does the water get in there so the water comes in from the lower unit of the the impeller in the lower unit uh -huh. the outdrive if you will, it's just sitting right back here. Um, it pumps water up into the engine, in the engine, and then it goes into the intake, and then down, wow. or in, in, and in the heads, and it cracked this block. Okay, hey, well, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. is this it right here? That's is that the crack we're looking at? The cracks right here. It goes Jeez. all the way into the valley a little bit. Oh my gosh! Towards the so that whole wall of that engine cracked off? All the way to the front. It's all cracked, all the way into there. Now how does water get into these engines, Jeff? So all this water, it actually comes in the intake. Because you got me confused here. Show us a little bit of how this thing works. So this thing... Okay, that's the intake. The it looks intake. just like... It doesn't look like a boat motor to me. It looks like a car engine, but... This is basically just your standard Vortec 4.3. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is a Vortec General Motors engine we're working yep. on here. Okay, it's just, okay. It's geared, it's the valves and the... Compression the, and stuff's a little bit different. A in little it. bit different, a little bit tighter. Uh -huh. Because your general, your general uh, car motor is running at 25, 30% uh -huh. capacity when you're going down the highway. Right. But when your boat motor's going, it's, it's running at 100% capacity. Wow. When you're up on plane. Now let me ask you a question. I see what you're talking about about the intake manifold. But what about these manifolds down here? What are these things? Are those some kind of water jacket action going on? Or so what those, are those used for? Those are the exhaust. So this is an exhaust? This is an exhaust. Okay, I, I'm confused. I thought so that's this, where the water came in. The water goes out the exhaust. It cools, oh. the, it cools the exhaust as well. It's actually a really wow. efficient way to cool it. <laughs> The, uh, the engine exhaust coming out of the motor is about 160 degrees, Gosh. as opposed to anywhere between 6 to 12, 1300 degrees in some cases. Jeez. So that thing there is really a cooler to so cool this, the water. This one's, this, uh, this is the, the coolant goes out, goes in the motor, uh -huh. right here where the thermostat is. Oh, okay. So the thermostat comes in here. And the water goes the water down into the there. heads. Uh huh. Goes into the heads here. Right. 
and it goes down into the block. And that's where it cracked right here. Wow. So it froze up in the wintertime, huh? Yep. Now, when you say he didn't winterize, what, what, are you talking about draining the water so, out yeah. of the engine? So on the, on the bottom of these, uh -huh. you just simply have a little drain plug. That's it? That's it. And that's all you have to do to winterize it? Just pull it. both those out, make sure it's out. And, Jeez. And I usually just leave these out until, until uh, next year. Until next year. I usually put them in a little bag and tape, tape, them, to, yeah. tape them to the throttle. Huh. But this one actually is still all right. Is that a freeze plug? The freeze plug blew out, blew of, it out of it on this one. But I thought that's what's supposed to save the motor. It's supposed to. But it did. Not this time. But the motor actually had two freeze plugs that blew out of it as well. Really? One, one right here. Jeez. And one on the other side. This wow, one. look at that. Yep. Right there. Jeez. That one was actually sitting on the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. And this is the side that cracked right here. Yep. So this really isn't that expensive of a fix. That is pretty quick and easy to. Is that right? Or are you crazy? Because it's it's at least four, three, four days. Three or four days labor. But how much money are we talking? Uh, between five and six grand. About. And that's about labor 20, and everything, or 20, just the parts of? That's labor and everything. It's about. Wow. About. Three thousand dollars for the just because he didn't want to drive the water. Yep. Back the uh, new motor. Jeez. New motor sitting right here. I haven't even gotten it out of the back. So is this here. a this is a brand new engine here, or is, is this like a complete motor drivetrain, or is that something you got to put together? This is a complete motor. It's a long box, which means it comes with. The, well, let's go ahead and unpack that, baby. Let's see what we got. Comes with the heads and. Okay, so that's a long block factory crate engine from General Motors. It's actually a rebuilt. Specifically for Man, the remanufactured job. Specifically for the marine industry. So what you're saying here, because I want to get this straight, you can't take a V6 out of a junkyard and throw it in your throw it in your boat and say we're going boat. This is a, a you could, but it's not going to last as long. Okay. You could do it, but it's not really specifically designed for the marine right. industry. Got it. Buddy. So this has a head. Okay, so this is a remanufactured engine. And was this done, was this remanufactured over at General Motors or? Um, this was done by a place back east somewhere. I don't exactly okay. remember where. Now, is it, now when you say rebuild, is it, it's because there's a difference between rebuild and remanufactured. So is this a rebuild job or remanufactured? It's remanufactured. It's completely gone through. Okay, so they use works. General Motors parts to rebuild the engine, which makes it remanufactured. Got it. And this is what the engine should look like right here. Yep. Wow. And you're saying this is like five grand for one of these dogs? Well, including labor, yeah. Six thousand dollars, right there. Yep. All because he didn't want to change it out. Now, how many miles do you think's on this thing, Jeff? I don't know. They go by the hours, and I'm sure there's a lot of hours on this thing. This boat's in 1991, and they don't have. The 1991. Hours. Now, what boat was this thing out of, buddy? This is on a. I forget what it's actually called. And what's the name of this engine? A um, Mercury a Marauder or? Mercruiser 4.3. Mercruiser 4.3. Now, is this made by Mercury, the boat? Or why do they call it Mercruiser? It, it is a collaboration between Mercury, and, Mercury and, and GM. Okay. So. So this motor, in the same sense, you can't take this motor and put it in your car. No. Did it mess up the crankshaft or anything, or are we just talking about so it, everything's good on it except the block, basically? I did notice that it has a hard time. It should be <laughs> really hard time uh, turning over. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, man. I'm looking at this. It looks yeah. like this either has water or got hot or something. There's water down there. So when you get water in the oil, uh -huh. oil floats. On water. Okay. Now to replace this motor, you're saying so. What you basically got to do this job? It's a long block, rebuilt long block. Uh huh. So what you've got to do? You took all the accessories off, which include the valve covers, the carburetor. Is this a carburetor or fuel injection? This is carbureted. This is a carbureted engine. Uh huh. Okay. And so it's, it's got the remanufactured crankshaft and bearings and rods and everything in it. Uh 
Mm -hmm. Ready to roll. Okay. See how it does not go smooth at all. Right, right. Because you don't even have any compression on it. Yeah, there's no compression and huh. still. So this motor was already on its way out anyway, the way it's looking. It's because of the rust that got in it and it oh, got okay. up in the cylinder. Yeah. The cylinders. Let's see what you mean. Now, did that long block engine include the new fuel oil pump or do you got a... Yeah, it does. It's actually... Okay. Oh, it comes separate. Right here. It comes separate. It's not on the block. The mailing. Okay. It comes with the fuel pump uh -huh. and all the seals and gaskets. All the seals and everything. So you're basically building this guy now. Did you pull this out of the boat yourself or...? Yeah, I did. Really? That you got the boat here, we can look at it. Yeah, that was a royal pain. That was not fun. Yeah, because let me ask you this question, Jeff. What is this mess, buddy? So that is all the, the water lines. That's it right there. That's what makes the water pump. This is the thermostat housing. And it goes Oh, out. wow. Look at that. That bolts on the top of the motor. Yeah, and then this sits on the front of the motor. That's the water oh, pump. Oh, okay. So that's like some super duty high torque water pump that pumps all the water. Now, where does the water come from? The water comes from. Well, you the, said it was lake water. I understand water, that. But how does it get up there? Let me grab the uh, lower unit. Okay. Power steering on this valve, huh? Yeah. Oh. So the uh, the water comes, gets pumped into these That's little it. holes here. Really? It goes into these little holes. There's a water pump in a, inside that. A little impeller inside here comes in through these this wow. one here, and it goes into the engine block. And then comes out the exhaust ports. Mm -hmm. Manifolds. Correct. Yeah, I remember you rebuilt one of those for us. Yep. And it had a little pump in there that sucks the water. Am I right? Yep. And that's something you should check every year too. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, I replace them every year. Just. Yeah, and when we're talking replacing them, we're talking literally rebuilding this lower section here. Yeah, you pull that lower section off. Right. The four bolts and the shifter. Uh -huh. Another one right there. Because you did that last time I was over here. Yeah, it was a much smaller one, but uh, still. We're going to have to post that video on YouTube so everybody can see that. Yeah. Wow. Now, what is this thing? Is so, that this the, is your flywheel cover. That's the flywheel. Okay. Yeah, the flywheel. Oh, and that here. hooks up to the drive shaft, which is back here. Yep. Oh, exactly. okay. I see. Wow. Well, this is pretty interesting. You got the flywheel that attaches with five bolts in, that, in the end. Gosh. And this drive unit. Attaches with three bolts. Huh, look how heavy that thing is. So, now there's a flywheel. And then of course that's your starter gear on the flywheel. Uh huh. Wow. Here's your five flywheel bolts. Huh. So what kind of recommendation, what kind of angle would you tell people not to blow their engine up? What's going on, Jeff? To make sure it is winterized properly every year. That's the that's the biggest thing without Now, when you say winterize, because you're kind of confused, are you talking about draining it and filling it with antifreeze, or what's going on? The best, usually most people just completely drain the system. I like to drain the system and then, and then put a little bit of RV antifreeze. Now, is it true that you shouldn't run a, a boat motor, and I, I don't know if we could be talking about this, without, any, without, without it being in the water? That you should always run your boat motor with the propeller in the water. Is that true? Or at least have a, a set of earmuffs which go around. The, What's an earmuff? The earmuffs go around the intake of those the little, water. Those little holes. Uh huh. And it there. just attaches to a hose. Uh huh. I have one somewhere around. So here. it goes on those little those little ports, those intake ports. Yep. And oh, okay. And then you hook it up, up to a water hose. Yep. And then you can run it. Yeah. It's really loud, but yeah. it's okay. Huh. Because your exhaust comes straight out of your propeller. Yeah, so to conclude it all off, what do you got to tell people here about this situation? Just be diligent and... We're and looking at a mess here, dude. We're looking at $6,000 worth. Is the boat really worth that much, Jeff? No, it's not. That's the, that's the hard part. This boat is old and I told them... You the told the owner? Yep, yeah, I told them that the best thing to do is find one with an outboard that wow. if you don't winterize an outboard, it's not that big a deal. The outboards actually drain themselves. I just can't believe this. This looks like a spider, dude. It looks oh. like a looks like a black widow spider just ready to eat you. Eat your scary. lunch. You got arachnophobia. I don't An expensive, expensive job here, guy. Uh-huh. 
And there's the there's the electrical system over here. Oh my gosh. Just kind of put on the ground. What a nightmare. Mercury Cruiser, huh? A Merc, what, what did you say? It was a Merc Cruiser? Merc Cruiser is the actual uh, name of the company. But, so this is the other. Jesus. Look at this. This is the other is. one that. Oh my gosh, look at that. So there's, well, how much is one of them things? These are about 400 bucks a piece. Wow. Look at that. And look at that. That's, that's quarter inch that. cast steel. Yeah, that's, and you can't weld that, can you? I mean, you could, but. You could, but it's not. You good. had to buy one of those. Yeah, I bought two of them. This guy loves his boat. Mm hmm. God, look at that, dude. Wow. And all because he didn't want it. He was too lazy to take a plastic oh, plug. Didn't know about it. Oh, okay. Well, that happens, dude. I mean, a lot of people get these boats and they buy stuff and they don't know how to, the maintenance and everything, because they don't know a guy named Jeff. Yeah, and I They don't know river rat welding and, and repairs. I can guarantee he's never changed the oil on it either. Then how long do you think this guy owned this thing? Uh, at least in the last couple of years. It's never changed the oil, so. No. Where's, can we go look at the boat yet or no? Yeah, we can go look at the boat. Let's go look at this boat, the uh, Mer, Mer Cruiser. Uh, what kind of boat are we talking about, buddy? Um, it's a little ski boat. It's a little ski boat right here in the Colorado River? or is No, it? they usually take it to, to the top of the lakes around here. So. so is this a popular engine we're looking at here, Jed? Is this a popular situation? It is a very popular motor, for, yeah. especially for the early 90s. I mean, we can't say how many miles is on it, but how many hours would you say was put on this motor uh, before replacement here? Probably at least two or 3,000 hours. Is that a lot of hours for a boat? No, they usually go at least 10,000 hours. So this one still had life left in it before he froze it. Not anymore. So what it, I guess Not we anymore. can call this, I guess we can call this a 100% authentic bonafide boat anchor. Yep. We can go ahead and throw a chain on that town, put it in his boat, and when he wants to camp out at night on his boat, just throw his engine, his old engine block in the water. Mm -hmm. The heads are still good. Yeah. Now, can you sell those heads? Or? I could. Yeah. But you're going to get back to the other. Let him sell them, right? $6,000. $6,000. You don't drain the water. $6,000. And I'm supporting my uh, Sunset, Grill. Sunset Grill hat. Okay, who is this? It's up on the mountain. It's my. It's a buddy of mine who owns okay. it. And right, it's, is it a good place to eat, Jess? It's good. It's it's kind of expensive, but it's a it's a really nice steakhouse, and we'll actually be able to see it up here as soon as we get over to this boat. So what you're saying is, when you're in Moab, visit my buddy over at the Sunset Grill. Yeah, their prime okay. rib is. Now, do you want to tell them a little really history good. about the Sunset Grill house, or do you want me to tell them? If you want to tell them, it's fine with me. Okay, now, I, now make sure that I'm telling the truth there. The All owner, right. the original owner of that, he was the uh, he was the uranium king, isn't that correct? Charlie, yeah. Charlie Steen, not yeah. Charlie Sheen, Charlie Steen. He was the original, authentic uh, uranium king of Moab, Utah, who lived in that house. Uh huh. Back to the boat, bro. What's up? What do we got here? A Sundance Marine Dynasty. Wow. So Sundance Marine is the uh, dealership that sold it to us. Yeah, him. got it. I, I see that now, Grand Junction. But this is called a Dynasty now. Is this a Mercury, Jeff? So no, the uh, the Mercury's are uh, all different manufacturers of boats. Boat okay, Mercury that's just the motor yeah. we're talking, Mercury. Okay. Uh -huh. All so right. Here's a little car. Wow. Two barrel carburetor. Here's the uh, ear muscle. Okay, that I was that's about. the ear muscle that you check it with. Now yep. was that in this boat with it or? That was in here. That was that's the owner's. Huh. But he never used it, I guess. No. Nope. Oh my lord! How do you get something like this out, Jeff? This is a. It was not easy. Look at this thing. This is like. I actually, crazy. Had to, I had to completely take out. Motor mount. Motor mount to get it out because it was it was just binding up and bending. So I now, when they say transom, what is a transom on a boat? Is that right so here? The transom the is the back of the boat, the very okay. back. Got it. That's where everything bolts yeah. to you on it. This. Yeah. The transom. And this is a fiberglass boat. Is the transom good on this one? Uh huh. It okay. is good. So this guy's putting six thousand dollars in this, and you warned him. He said it's not worth it. Don't do it. No, if you were to buy a boat just like this with a good motor in it, it'd be about thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred, four thousand dollars. Wow. And this ain't even a big boat. Look at this thing, Jeff. No, it's pretty small. Huh. I think a lot of people are going to say it ain't worth it. Yeah, I told him that. Yeah, but he loves his boat. Uh huh. And this is the controls right here. Yep, that's the throttle. 
That's the throttle. Look at that. Is that an ignition switch on there? What is that switch for, Jeff? I think so. <laughs> wow. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate you showing us that. Now, when do you plan on having all this done? And what is this thing here? I know this this cast iron thing's part of the motor. What is that? So this is the exhaust. It goes. That's the exhaust. It goes up huh. And then out. Uh huh. And then it goes out these flapper. Now is that where the water comes out, or? Yep. So you can see. Yeah, and right you got here, one on each side. Got it. Water goes in all uh -huh. four of those to cool them down. Okay. And then it, as soon as it gets up here, uh -huh. it just kind of it pours over, and then you just all. The exhaust and water all come out at the same time. Wow. Now, can you sandblast that? And, or will you just put it all back, clean it up, and put, put it back, it back together? together yeah. It's just going to rust out, anyways. And then you got a hose here. Now, what is that? That's your fuel. This is your fuel hose going to the fuel tank got right here. It. Okay. We're just trying to figure it out. That's all, Jed. And the little red thing down there. Now, what's that for? That's a bilge pump. So it's. Oh, it pumps all the water out. Start pumping the water, yep. And that's the water that gets in here. Got uh -huh. it, buddy. And this guy told me. What did he say? I asked him what he did to winterize, and he said all he did was pull the plug out the back. Where so. the water would drain out of the uh -huh. transom area. And it drained out of the boat. It just didn't drain out of the motor. Well, now we know. We know now, don't we, Jeff? Yep. $6,000. Or go buy a $3,500 boat. What is this, Jed? That's our, for our light. Okay. Got it. 1992, you said? I believe it's a 90, late 91. Well, just the labor of pulling that thing out. I mean, that's the main part of it. Yeah. Yep, it is. Yeah. And you're a boat guy, aren't you, Jeff? I mean, look what we got over here, dude. We got that big aluminum boat over here. Yeah, that one's fun. Yeah. That's another day and another story, bro. I appreciate yep. it. Take care and make a friend. Yeah. When are we going to see you again, buddy? When are you going to come by? <laughs> Well you got well you got a service call that we could go check out. Yeah. You That's guys like our trailer we built? You talking about this one here? Yeah, we just got done building You just trailer. got done building that? Now what is that trailer? That's kind of a funky looking trailer there. What so this is a flatbed specifically for rats. Gonna put a winch up on this mount up on this uh -huh. up here. Spare tire mount, sixteen foot deck. This is specifically for wide. rubber rubber rafts. Yep. Huh. Now, how big a raft can we haul on this thing, Jeff? Um, 18 foot. And you made this from scratch. This is a scratch-made yep, we'll uh, raft, uh, raft trailer made by uh, River Rat Welding Company. Yep, when I got it, it was all huh. just... Now, being a single-axle trailer, are they going to have any problem with the trailer walking? They shouldn't, no. This is a 5,000-pound uh, axle. Wow. I do that mainly to uh, huh. overbuild it because they're. Yeah. You know, we got some really nasty roads around here. That's a heavy duty trailer. I like the weld job you did on it. You put a bulldog hitch going. Yeah, I don't like the little. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the um, up and down. Uh, yeah, what is the that jack? thing? The jack's nice. That's heavy duty. I like that. Yeah. We have a nice, that is, nice manual winch, yeah. manual crank winch that we can, they can pull their boats up. Man, you can uh, actually haul a car on this thing. Look at pretty close. What do you use there? I beam. Uh, C channel. Jeez. The frames four inch C channel and then the top wow. five inch C channel to give it the drop because they're Jeez. hooking it up to a van. That's awesome, dude. Okay, Jet. Let me get back to work. I got work to Sounds do good. too. I got to get paid, buddy. Sounds good. It's good to see okay. you guys. I'll see you later, bro. We'll see you uh, now. When are you going to have this thing back together? Maybe we'll come over and be in the get next, a part two on this. Next couple days, next maybe next week or so. Okay, are you going to test it out? or? Yeah, I'll test it out. With the uh, um, earmuffs? Probably. I or are we going to put it in the water and I go might test take drive it? Out it? To the river and see. Maybe we can take it to the river and we'll go test drive it. Okay. We'll put, a, we'll put a jet, we'll put a ski in there and I'll pull you around. There we go. <laughs> I'll see you later, bro. Sounds good. All right, buddy. All right, Worldwide River Expedition. We've got Jed over here in Moab, Utah, doing what he does the best, working on boats and getting them done, doing it right, doing it right. Because he does it right. See you later. <laughs>